Well, summer has finally broken. I think autumn's here. Welcome back to part six of upgrading my small lathe. Last episode, we worked on the cross slide feed handle, and today we're going to work on the dial which sits on top of it. Let's take a closer look at some of the drawings. So we're going to work on the dial which uh, sits in this place here. Uh, we did all the preparations for that last video. So here's the drawing for it. It's a simple ring with a step in the bore, um, a knurled diameter on the outside, and this complements the dust shield in the handle, this, this ledge here. I originally specified steel, but I changed my mind for aluminium. Uh, the reasons for that is I want to knurl it, and uh, my knurling setup here isn't that um, robust. And also I want to engrave it, and um, I thought it would be easier starting in aluminium, and we'll see how we get on. So I've already prepared some material here. Uh, it's extra long so that uh, we can uh, provide a, a good uh, mounting feature for um, turning but also transferring over to my setup for engraving. The knurling tool I'm using here is a caliper type, which minimizes the load on the headstock bearings, but actually the work was a little too large and I had to feed in with the cross slide. Having knurled the uh, outer diameter, uh, it's time to turn a step. So 0.261 and down to a diameter of 1.205. And of course this is the diameter on which we're gonna do the engraving. Well, this is our setup for engraving. I have to admit it's the first time I've done it like this. Uh, the last time I did it actually on the Super 7 lathe, and it was when I made this rotary table. Since I want to divide this into a very inconvenient number of divisions, uh, it would be very tricky on the lathe with change wheels, so I decided to use this. Uh, and the reason for that is because the lead screw is actually 16 TPI, so that means one turn is 62 and a half thou. So uh, I don't want to make a lead screw. Um, I want to use what's existing. So I've decided to divide this into 62 and a half divisions. I've made this engraving tool. It's just a piece of half inch diameter steel with a set screw in there to hold a 3 16 diameter cutter. Now this cutter actually isn't um, high speed steel. It's made from silver steel or drill rod if you're American. Uh, which I hardened and tempered. I made this some time ago actually. I've uh, just to change the shape here to make it more suitable for engraving. It's got a very slight flat on the end there. So uh, the setup is that I'm going to use the drill press to do the engraving and I'm going to use this to do the indexing. Uh, there are a few challenges along the way. One is to stop this from rotating. It's engaged in low gear so it gives the, the maximum resistance to torque at the bottom here. But what I'm going to try and do is ensure consistency by taking up any backlash with the drill chuck key each time I cut. Now, I'm not sure this is going to work, but this is a lot simpler than my alternative. And the alternative was to set up an arrangement here with a bar coming off to the left and some kind of parallel system to stop it from rotating. I didn't want to do that. It was too much trouble. So we'll just try this way. We'll see if it works. So the first thing I need to do is get this running concentric. So I'm uh, just going to clock this up with the center line of the table. So 
just going to set the table a bit closer to the head. On this machine, the table tends to stay put and I move the head. So I can adjust the depth of cut like that. Get this a little bit more centered than it is at the moment. I've set the clock up on here and I'm going to move the whole head over five thou to bring it to touch the tangent here and then I'm going to go for an eighth thou depth of cut on top of that. So that should enable us to uh, get the correct depth of cut. I think we'll start with four thou and see what that looks like. So I'm going to start by cutting the tenth divisions, so the major divisions, and uh, the length of the cut I'm determining by this stop, uh, by this stop. So I've set that first, um, and we'll we'll start with those major divisions first. Now, because there's uh, plenty of room for error in this process, I've actually tabulated um, the positions that I need to scribe at. So the long the long length lines are starting at zero degrees and then 57.6 degrees 288 and then 345.6 so that will give us six major divisions so we'll start with those we're ready now to do the medium length divisions so i've come back to zero and uh, we're going to reference from there. So the first medium line is 28.8 degrees. And the next is at 86.4 degrees. Now just adjusting the depth for the small gradations. Now we can start the individual gradations which represent one thousandths of an inch on the dial. So this is as it looks, um, having just taken it off the rotary table. Doesn't look very nice because of all the burrs, they're going to be machined off. Uh, what I do find uh, reassuring is that all the burrs are very consistent and uh, they all curl in the same direction and they're the same length. None of them have broken off, uh, that's, uh, that's uh, quite uh, interesting to me, um, that uh, such consistency in this ad hoc process using my pillar drill and um, what I'm going to do now is to uh, paint this with marking blue which will hopefully go right into those slots there and then uh, set it up on the lathe, recenter it and skim off these burrs 
and uh, hopefully that will leave a nice finish. Unfortunately it has tracked up in a couple of places onto the knurling. Anyway, we'll go ahead, skim this and uh, see what the result's like. Okay, just checking that uh, it's going back concentric. Uh, this isn't an independent chuck, this is uh, a self-centering four-jaw chuck, so uh, it should be okay, but we'll, we'll see. Okay, I'm gonna have to try rotating this, I think. Okay, by rotating the work in the chuck, I've got it down to about a quarter of a thou, so that's fine. Now it's time to turn the features on the other side of the knurled ring. The knurling isn't brilliant quality, but um, it's going to be okay. It's a very narrow band of knurling that we're actually going to use. I'm starting with a form tool, and then I'm going to swap to a parting tool to get deeper. Now it's to size and we're ready to part off. Sorry about the quality of the picture here. Parting off slightly longer than required so that later we can turn around and face to the correct length. And it's gonna be important to get a chamfer in here because there'll be a radius on the undercut that this mates up against, so we need to put a chamfer on this. And we need an internal chamfer as well. Yeah, in overall terms, I'm, I'm happy with the way this came out, um, especially since it was done on my pillar drill uh, using the rack and pinion and the quill. Now I'd just like to explain the the way the markings work. So uh, they actually start from here. So winding in, in a clockwise direction you can see the 10 thou 20 all the way around to this point 60 You've got 61 and 62. Now that isn't a mistake there, that is correct. That's half a thou to bring us around to 62 and a half thou, which corresponds to one turn of a 16 TPI lead screw. So that's why it's like that. Uh, this was my choice not to change the lead screw to go with what we've already got. And this is how it fits on to the hand wheel. 
So you can see the O-ring there, and this is a, a sliding fit over and then slips over the O-ring and then provides us with a reasonable degree of friction like that. So on the end here there's a recess and then that recess goes the, the washer that we machined last time, just slightly proud and then the whole thing locates like this. Uh, the next step now is to machine the little handle. Now I've got the drawing for that here. So here it is. So um, I'm going to use a 4BA thread on the end there and uh, machine, from, machine from steel and it's going to go into this area here, this annular area here midway between the inside and the outside. So I need to center pop that, drill and tap it 4BA and then we need to make the handle. Now this is where I could really do with collets, which I, I don't yet have. Um, maybe that's a project for later. But um, I've just cut the end off, uh, turned it around, and I'm just going to put a 4BA thread on the, um, on the end here up to a shoulder. I'm bringing the tailstock chuck up for support to ensure that the die holder is maintained square. And as we start to rotate the chuck by hand, I'm simultaneously applying a little bit of pressure on the tailstock feed screw. Now that uh, we started, we can finish off by hand bringing it up to the shoulder. Now one final detail here, because I'm not able to get the thread right up to the shoulder, and it's just too small for me to put an undercut in there, I'm going to have to just uh, put a clearance drill into the beginning of the tapped hole there just to make sure that this seats nicely. So at last here's the completed hand wheel and uh, I think that's come out uh, as I envisaged it would. So uh, we'll fit this and then we'll just test the accuracy of the lead screw and the indexing with my DTI. So you can see here the setup I've got, I've put the DTI on the bed and it's resting up against the tool post here. So it's measuring the axial distance and then I've got the cross slide feed handle here. There's a sheet metal um, plate that's supposed to go on here with an engraving on it. I haven't made that yet so I've just put this 
pointer there temporarily and what we'll do is we'll uh, move the carriage and see whether the dial and the DTI correspond. The DTI is on zero and we can align this with the with the pointer. So we'll move five thou out and we have four and a half thou on the DTI. We have another five. We have nine thou on the DTI, another five, and we have 14 thou on the DTI, another five, and we have 19. So not too bad. Um, because some of that could be uh, because we're swinging through an arc here and we've actually gone over quite a wide range. Um, I thought the other thing we could do is look at the backlash. So bring it back to zero. And this is on zero here. That looks like we've got 3000 backlash in the assembly, which I think is fine. So. I do hope you've uh, enjoyed this video, found something useful in it. Consider uh, subscribing and uh, give me a thumbs up if you appreciated this video. See you next time. Thanks.